Welcome back to AP Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug, and you're joining me on my next lesson in solution chemistry. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Hit that thumbs up, ring that bell, so that uh, YouTube will tell other folks about this AP Chemistry Complete course. Well, we're learning about solution chemistry and how water is the universal solvent. If you have enough water and you give it enough time, water will dissolve just about anything. Now, it is true that some substances will dissolve much better in water than others. Now, in this lesson, in this video, we're specifically going to be learning about how that has to do with ionic compounds. We are learning solubility rules specifically for ionic compounds in at least the first part of this video. So, we're going to be looking at some solubility rules. Now, it is important for chemistry students to know some of these solubility rules for ionic compounds. Uh, to be honest, the AP chemistry exam is, has been written in such a way that you don't have to know all of these solubility rules, but to be honest, if you do know all of these solubility rules that I'm about to show you, it's going to make your life a whole lot easier as you progress through AP chemistry and then future chemistry courses in college if you take those. So let's start with the first one. On this first uh, slide here, I have some cases of things that pretty much are always soluble. So these are probably the most important solubility rules on this first slide right here. All nitrates are soluble. So what that means is if you have any ionic compound that ends with an NO3, has a nitrate at the end of it, it is going to dissolve in water. Okay, so that is probably one of, if not the most important solubility rule. You have to know that one for AP Chemistry. Here's another one. This is probably just as important, if not almost as important. All compounds that start with an alkali metal ion. So that means lithium or sodium or potassium, rubidium, cesium ions, as well as the ammonium ion, so NH4+, those are soluble as well. You can't get through the net ionic equations uh, or writing net ionic equations if you don't know those two solubility rules. Those are the most fundamental of them all. You can get by without knowing some of the others, but these you have to know. All nitrates are soluble, and if you see any compound that has an alkali metal ion sitting at the front of it, or an ammonium, it will dissolve in water. Okay, you have to know that. Now here's another one that occasionally pops up, all acetates are soluble. So if you have any compound that ends with the acetate, which of course is C2H3O2 with a negative charge, that's going to be soluble as well. So for those rules, those things are always soluble. Now on the next slide here, I have some more solubility rules, but this time we have things that are usually soluble. So on the last slide it was always soluble. These are usually soluble and when I say usually that means that there are some exceptions. And yes, you have to know those exceptions. So all chlorides are soluble except for three. If you have silver chloride, lead two chloride, or mercury one chloride, those will be insoluble compounds. Those will be solids, generally, when they're produced in solution. And we can say the same thing for bromides and iodides. And to be honest, to be honest for fluorides, that works pretty well also. Okay, But chlorides, bromides, and iodides, those are the ones that pop up most frequently on, uh, in general chemistry and on the AP exam. Okay, So uh, those are soluble, except for those three exceptions. And sulfates. Sulfates usually are soluble. So if you have a compound that ends with SO4, it's probably going to dissolve in water. But this time there are more exceptions that you have to know. And you've got to know these six exceptions. Except for silver sulfate, lead sulfate, mercury 1 sulfate. Of course, that was lead 2. Calcium sulfate, strontium sulfate, and barium sulfate. So at this point, it seems like it's getting a little bit more complex, but hopefully you can remember those insoluble sulfates and insoluble uh, halides. 
by noticing that some of these are the same, you know, silver lead mercury are both, or on, on both lists there, silver lead mercury. On sulfates, we add three more, calcium, strontium, and barium. And if you look at the periodic table, I don't have one on this slide here, but if you look at the periodic table, you'll find that those three metals are right next to each other. They are some of the heavier alkaline earth metals. So that's a nice way to remember those. They're very close to each other on the table. So those are some compounds or some, uh, yes, ionic compounds that usually are soluble with a few exceptions. Now the next slide, I have a bunch of compounds that are usually not soluble. So chromates, that means if you see a compound that ends with CrO4 with a two minus charge, that's, th those chromates will normally be insoluble, except for that second rule we learned on the very first slide, right? If it has an alkali metal or an ammonium on there, well, that's always going to be soluble. But every other chromate is insoluble. It's not going to dissolve in water very well. Phosphates are the same way. If you see a PO4 at the end of something, there's a good bet it's going to be insoluble. It's not going to dissolve in water very well, except, of course, for alkali metals, and ammonium phosphate, those, those compounds always dissolve in water. You know, that, like I said, that's one of the most important rules, isn't it? So you gotta know that. Here's another one. Carbonates are the same way. So if you see something that ends with CO3, that means it's not gonna dissolve in water very well, is it? Except if it's an alkali metal carbonate like a sodium carbonate or a lithium carbonate or a potassium carbonate or, of course, ammonium carbonates. Here's another rule. All hydroxides are insoluble except for alkali metal hydroxides and barium, strontium, and calcium. Now there are some textbooks that include magnesium in there as well. You know, it, it kind of depends on what you consider soluble and insoluble. There's kind of a line there, but if you know, know these rules here, you will be in good shape, certainly. So hydroxides are insoluble except for the alkali metals. So of course, like sodium hydroxide and lithium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide, those will be, those are going to dissolve in water really well. And then barium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and calcium hydroxide. Those will be uh, dissolving in water very well also. Every other hydroxide, so, so if you see like an aluminum hydroxide or a copper two hydroxide or some other weird hydroxide, it's not going to dissolve in water very well. So we've seen these rules. Let's practice because I have just thrown a lot at you there and it's, I can't see what that says, but it says which of these compounds are soluble in water. So we have a few examples here and let's see if we can decide a yes or a no. Will sodium perbromate dissolve in water? Now we did not learn a rule for perbromates, did we? but we did learn about sodium. Anything that has an alkali metal sitting on the front of it, like a sodium, that is a yes. Okay, so that is soluble. It's gonna dissolve in water pretty well. Let's try barium phosphate. Now, what do we say about phosphates? Phosphates are not soluble, so we're gonna say it's insoluble. See, the only exception to that rule would be if there were an alkali metal or an ammonium ion sitting on the front of it, and that, you know, uh, oh, barium does not fall into that category. So that is insoluble. Barium phosphate does not dissolve in water very well. Let's try iron 3 chromate. Now, what did we learn about chromates? Do chromates dissolve in water? Not usually, unless there's an alkali metal or an ammonium, and we don't have that here. So that's insoluble. How about gold 3 chloride? Is that going to dissolve in water? Well, we do have a, a rule for chlorides, don't we? All chlorides are soluble except for three. And those three are silver, lead, and mercury, right? And this is not one of those. So yes, that is going to be soluble. We're going to say yes, that is soluble in water. What about barium nitrate? Now that was the very first rule we learned, wasn't it? Every nitrate is always going to be soluble in water because 
there's an NO3 sitting there at the end of that compound that is going to be soluble. So that is definitely going to work. Let's try this one. We have mercury 1 sulfate. Now, most sulfates are soluble, aren't they? But this is one of those exceptions. Right? The exceptions were silver lead mercury and uh, calcium, strontium, and barium. And so uh, that is one of the six exceptions. So we're going to say that one is insoluble. Mercury 1 sulfate does not dissolve in water very well. L let's try one more. Aluminum bromide. Now, we learned a rule for bromides, right? Are those halides going to be soluble? They are, right? Except for silver, lead, and mercury, and this is not one of those. So this is also going to be listed as a yes. That is soluble. So hopefully, after practicing these rules, and if you have my uh, problem set, problem set 10, you're going to be able to do lots of practice on this. And later on, when we're writing net ionic equations in lesson 11, in a future video, you will be getting lots of practice with these solubility rules as well. So make sure that you know them, because otherwise, uh, lesson 11 is going to be really tough, if not impossible, to do. Now, when we talk about these solubility rules, like I said, why is it important to know them? You know, the AP exam doesn't always make you know all of them but you will have to know them in general chemistry and in future chemistry courses. You know, soluble compounds exist, I should say exist, as separate ions in water solution. So for example, if we were to look at this compound right here, sodium nitrate, it is soluble. So that means it's actually going to break apart into its component ions when you dissolve it in water. So this little reaction is going to take place. That sodium nitrate you know, it started out as a solid, but when you dissolve it in water, it breaks apart into Na plus ions and nitrate, NO3 negative ions. That is a process that is called dissociation. Dissociation, that is just what happens when a compound breaks apart into its component ions when it's dissolved in water, dissociation. And that's what soluble ionic compounds do when they're dissolved in water. They dissociate, they break apart. And that's important to know because in our next lesson, lesson 11, which is coming up uh, before too long, we're gonna, we're gonna have to do this and do it a lot. So that's important to be able to do. So if we have copper two sulfate, is that soluble? Why, yes, it is. It's one of the, it's a sulfate, and it's not one of the six exceptions, so it's going to break apart. So when we write the equation for its dissociation, CuSO4 starts out as a solid, but then when you dissolve it in water, it breaks apart into copper two ions. I don't have a whole lot of room to write here, but those are always aqueous. Ions are always aqueous. And then we have sulfate, SO4, two negative, and that's aqueous as well. So that's the equation for the dissociation of copper 2 sulfate in water. Now what about this one? AgCl, silver chloride. Does that dissolve in water? Well, it doesn't, does it? Now most chlorides are soluble, but this, you know, this one is one of the three exceptions, you know, silver, lead, and mercury. So if you try to dissolve that in water, it just sinks down to the bottom of the beaker, and it's not going to break apart. It is not going to dissociate. It just stays as AgCl. It is insoluble. There is no appreciable dissociation reaction there. If it dissolves and dissociates, it's very, very small, and it's not. Uh, you you won't see it with your eye. Now we are going to talk about how it's possible that a, maybe a very, very tiny amount of that might dissolve, and we'll talk about that in a later lesson. But for right now, we're just going to say it's insoluble. No. Uh, a dissociation worth speaking of. Now, there is a principle in chemistry that is very useful. It's called like dissolves like. And this is a little rule of thumb that will actually get you through quite a bit of questions when it comes to solubility and will something dissolve in something else. And here's how it goes. Polar molecules, like, you know, ammonia is a polar molecule and 
ethanol, uh, ethanol or ethyl alcohol, that's a polar molecule, will dissolve very easily in a polar solvent, like water. So uh, like dissolves like. A polar solute dissolves in a polar solvent. And so on the other hand, if you have a nonpolar molecule, and most of these organic hydrocarbons like methane and benzene and things like that, maybe carbon tetrachloride, we can throw that in there as well. It's nonpolar. They will not dissolve in water. So if you tried to take some methane and, and bubble that into water, you're not going to get much dissolving taking place. Now, if you have a nonpolar molecule, you know, like the methane and the benzene and I guess the carbon tetrachloride as well, they're going to dissolve easily into a nonpolar solvent. I guess that's why I didn't have CCL4 up there because we're calling that the solvent. Okay, so like dissolves like. Polar solutes dissolve in polar solvents. And likewise, nonpolar solutes dissolve in nonpolar solvents. And so if you were to take some ammonia, NH3, or some ethanol, it's probably not going to dissolve into that nonpolar solvent like carbon tetrachloride. Okay, so once again, how do you figure out if something is polar or nonpolar? I'm sure that's on your mind right now. Well, remember from lesson nine, which we had just not too long ago, you have to draw it out. Or re remember what its Lewis electron dot structure looks like. Uh, if it has any unbalanced region of negative charge, it's polar. If everything is all balanced out, everything is all very nicely, evenly distributed as far as electrons go, it's nonpolar. Let's try a few examples. Let's say we have this question. Which of the following molecules would be expected to dissolve in water? And you might remember that when we talk about water, water is water has a shape like this. It has a bent structure, 105 degrees. It is a bent structure. It is a polar molecule because there's this unbalanced region of negative charge up here. You don't have that down here. So which of these would be expected to dissolve in water? What about carbon tetrafluoride? Well, if I were to draw that out, let me just draw out the structure of carbon tetrafluoride. It looks like this. And of course, at this point, you, you should be able to draw these yourselves. I'm just doing it quickly for the sake of time. So here is carbon tetrafluoride. It looks like it has a nice tetrahedral structure. Is there anything lopsided about that molecule? I hope you see that, that there's, there's nothing lopsided about that molecule. It is completely evenly distributed. There's no uneven distribution of electrons. That is a nonpolar molecule. Uh, I'm leaving out an N there. It's a nonpolar molecule. So that's not going to dissolve in water. I'm going to say no on that one. That's not going to dissolve in water. How about NaCl? Well, remember, this is an ionic compound, isn't it? So we have a whole set of rules for, for those. We don't have to worry about polar and nonpolar. If it's ionic, just use the rules that we learned a few minutes ago. Chlorides will dissolve in water, won't they? Unless they're, you know, silver lead and mercury. So Sodium chloride, that is a yes. I'm going to circle that one. Definitely. What about C2H2? So this is a compound that we call ethyne, or sometimes acetylene. And if we draw the structure of that molecule, it looks like this. It is a structure that as far as I can tell, has no unshared pairs of electrons on it. So is there anything lopsided about that? Is there anything that is you know, unevenly distribu uh, distributed in that uh, structure? And it looks like it's not. You know, For the most part, if you see a compound that just has carbons and hydrogens, it's nonpolar, and it's not going to dissolve in water. So I'm going to say no and put an X through that one. You would not expect acetylene to dissolve in water. What about... HCl. Well, that's an acid, isn't it? We can look at that in a couple different ways. Acids, they start with hydrogen. They're always going to dissolve in water, aren't they? Uh, you can also reason with it and say it's a chloride, and you know chlorides will pretty much dissolve in water, except for those three exceptions. So I'm going to say yes on that one. 
That dissolves in water very well. How about nitrogen trifluoride, NF3? Well, let's draw the structure of that. I think we've drawn the structure of that one before. Like I said, uh, for some of these, it is convenient if you can just learn the structures of some of these. And of course, I've done this in, long enough that I just know what the structure is. And the more you do this, you'll be able to do the same. Is there a lopsided structure to this? Or is there an unbalanced region of negative charge? I would say yes, because there is one unshared electron pair on this central atom right here. And that's not balanced out by anything else in this structure. This is a pyramidal structure, 107 degrees. So this is a nonpolar, I'm sorry, this is a polar molecule, very polar in fact. So that is going to dissolve in a, in a polar solvent such as water. Okay, so we have three of the five that did dissolve in water. I hope you were able to uh, learn something about solubility in this lesson. Uh, if you will hit that like button, then YouTube will spread the word about my AP Chemistry videos to, uh, uh, to, uh, to other folks. I want everyone not to get a five, get a great score on the AP exam. So uh, keep joining me on our journey through AP Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching chemistry for more than two decades now, and, and I want to share what I know with you. So join me again where we can learn some more chemistry, more chemistry together.